You can find an overview of all my videos at www.genesispc.com and you click on the button videos on YouTube and you get a complete listing of all the videos I created for you on Excel on Excel VBA on Access Access VBA and VB Script we have a database here I called it protection because it's open I see that file and it is split in a front end this is the front end and a back end the back end has only the tables the back end can be stored on a server or whatever and every user has access to that server or to that back end through the front end in the front end they can put their own queries reports forms macros modules whatever they want we also put a button in that front end so the user when they click on the button they can create a copy of the back end with the day or the date that they created that copy so how did we do that here is the database it has it happens to have three tables but they are linked they are in the back end so they don't really exist physically in this database the rest is all up to the front end so how do you split a database like that very simple database tools access database and split the database it automatically creates an underscore be file that has all the tables in it you don't have to do anything for that now we are going to create a button I have it here under add ins there is the button it backs up the table so here is the function we are going to use I happen to call it button it has to be a function because we are going to call it from an auto executable macro declare a variable of the command bar and the command bar button type if the bar doesn't exist yet then we are going to create it otherwise we don't have to do a thing we set O bar by adding to the collection of command bars a new command bar that I happen to call macros. It's of the bar floating type. And the last argument is is it temporary or not? That means when you close the database, does it delete that bar? Yes. But it will open it again when we start this database. Make sure the bar is visible. Then we add to the controls on that bar a new item. Of the control button type the style of it is a, a button icon we give it a certain face ID you can choose whatever you want experiment with it I chose 173 when someone clicks on the button on action we run the sub that I call backup here it is and the tooltip text of that thing says backup the tables so the user knows what the button is for. You can add more buttons, of course. What does that backup subroutine do? You declare variables, including one of the DAO database type, data active objects database type. We create an error handler. If there is a problem in the code, then go to trap. Trap is a label with a colon and each time something goes wrong it tells me in a message box what the description of the error is that occurred and I will explain that later on then we say what is the name of the old file the backend file and what is going to be the name of the copy the backup file the backend file is in my case called protection underscore be you have to adjust that for your situation you may have to adjust also the extension I am using 2013 or 2010 but if you have an older version you have to change that into MDB the new file is the left of the old one take the whole part the length of the whole one but minus 6 why minus 6 because that extension is 6 characters long including the dot hook onto it 
a literal underscore hook onto it today's date make sure that you have dashes and not slashes for file addresses always have backslashes so don't use slashes there but dashes and hook onto it the extension with the dot if that file does already exist then kill it and create a new one that will only happen if you do this several times on the same day otherwise that will not happen if you don't want that adjust it else create a new file in the same workspace and call that new file file new that is the one that has the date in it and then you can just close it for it has been created already then we do the, the shortest code to make a copy of a file file copy the old one and make a copy with that address if something goes wrong here everything goes into the error handler and then you haven't closed if you if something goes wrong here you haven't closed ODB yet so that's why we added it to the error handler make sure that it's closed then we once we have copied it we tell the user the backup is ready and don't forget to put exit sub there otherwise it will just run into the error handler anytime even if there was no error now we are pretty well set all we have to do now is create the auto executable macro we do that in the front end I did that already here so I don't have to do all the work it has a run code command and what does it run the function button it has to be a function that's why I have open and close parentheses at the end that was the button function that we created in the module remember that was this one we are going to close that it was the function button okay. so now we are pretty well set when we close the database and we open it again we should have that button automatically it was temporary so it will be deleted I open it again protection is my front end database and it ran already the function button so now there is an add-ins tab on the menu and it can have many command buttons I have only one which is called the backup tables and when I click on it it's going to do all the work and it says the backend database has been backed up already so when I look here I should find it there is my backend and it has just tables in it because it's the backend again that can be on the server or it can be on a drive that everyone has access to but what is so nice is that every user has his or her own front end with their own queries their own forms their own reports their own macros their own modules 